So, welcome to Economics with Mr. Molden. Uh, in this first video, uh, we are going to be looking at demand. Uh, we will look, eventually look at supply, um, finding equilibrium between using supply and demand, and then some disequilibrium as well in this series on supply and demand. Uh, so, let's start off with demand. Um, in covering demand, we're going to cover four things. We're going to cover what is demand versus what is quantity demanded, what is the law of demand, and how does that relate. Um, and then show that visually on a demand curve, and then lastly look at what happens when we change the demand curve or changes in demand. So, demand versus quantity demand. All right, demand very simply is what consumers are willing and able to buy at all prices. So, you're a consumer, I'm a consumer. We all buy things, all right? But we have to be both willing and able. And if we're not that, we have no demand on the product. So willing means you have to want it, all right? Little plastic dinosaurs, big things in my household. We're willing to buy these, all right? You also have to have the ability to buy them, which means that as long as they stay cheap, we can buy little plastic dinosaurs. If they become really expensive, no longer able to buy them or buy as many of them, so our demand would change. Quantity demanded, though, is what we as a consumer would be willing and able to buy at a particular price. So how many plastic dinosaurs are we willing to buy when they're 50 cents versus how many are we willing to buy when they're a dollar or if they were $10? That's the difference between demand and quantity demanded. When looking at quantity demanded, we can very quickly find that as consumers, there is a law of demand that we place and it's relationship between quantity demanded and price. Uh, so think like a consumer. If you're at a store wanting to buy stuff, you will very simply see this. So our plastic dinosaurs here, hot commodities. As the price of these dinosaurs climbs from 50 cents to a dollar to ten dollars, I'm going to want to buy less of them. And there's several reasons. A, I can't afford as many as I could before. B, I don't like paying ten dollars for a plastic dinosaur. So both my willingness and ability will change. Now if the prices start going down, my quantity demand on these little plastic dinosaurs will increase. If they're going from 50 cents to 25 cents to a penny, man, I'm snatching these things up like they're hotcakes because now they're cheap and we can have, you know, dinosaurs for everybody, right? That is the law of demand. So the law of demand, as high prices, we don't like a, lot, a whole lot of plastic dinosaurs. At low prices, we do. We can take that same law of demand and put it on a graph and have what is known as demand curve. So at high prices, we have a low quantity. Prices is always on the vertical, quantity is always on the horizontal. Price vertical, quantity, hor quantity horizontal. So at high prices, we don't want a whole lot of plastic dinosaurs. Ten dollars a dinosaur is a little much in my book. Now when those fall to a penny a dinosaur, we're willing to buy out the store because we have the ability to and the willingness to. And so if we play connect the dots, we have a demand curve. Yes, it's a straight line, I'm talking theory here. It's a demand curve. Demand curves always have a downward or negative slope because they show the law of demand that at high prices, quantity is low, and at low prices, quantity is high. A few things with the demand curve. If we're moving along the line, we're changing the price and quantity demanded. So if there's a change in price, you just move along the line. Now, sometimes in life, things other than price are going to change. And there's lots of things. I have an acronym for you. Tripe, T-R-I-P-E. These will help you remember the things that can help uh, influence a change in demand. Now, a few things. If one of these tripe uh, things change and it causes you to increase your want to buy more plastic little dinosaurs, you will shift the whole demand curve to the right. That is a increase in demand at each and every price. Right is increase. Now, if for some reason one of these tripe items changes and it wants you to, makes you want to buy less plastic dinosaurs, we will shift the demand curve to the left. So a right is increase, left is decrease. So what are these uh, tripe items? Well first, T, taste and preferences. Alright, so maybe green plastic dinosaurs no longer considered cool. We need purple ones that would be a change in taste and preferences. All right. uh, we do this all the time in economics. Fads, 
uh, music changes, styles of clothing, all right, all calls and changes and preferences. All right. Next, related goods. All right. So we're going to leave the pli price of the plastic donuts are the same. But let's say you could substitute little people for plastic dinosaurs. Well, if the price of the little people changes, that's going to change my willingness to buy plastic dinosaurs. These are more expensive, buying more of these. These are cheaper, buying less of these. Didn't change these guys' price, just changes my willingness to buy them. All right. Substitute goods. Well, that's a substitute good. Complementary goods. Every time that I buy a plastic dinosaur, I need to buy a little plastic person car so that they can stomp on the dinosaur. The dinosaur can stomp on them. If these guys change his price, that's going to change my ability to want to buy these as well. These are more expensive, buying less of these. Uh, these are less expensive, buying more of these and more of these. It's great. So, substitute goods, complementary goods. They're changing in prices will influence my willingness to change the dinosaur. Income. If I get a sudden raise in income, I can buy lots of dinosaurs. I get laid off, have no more money. Oh, sad day, less dinosaurs. All right. Size of population. If my market size changes, suddenly I go from selling dinosaurs to only in Cleburne, population 35,000, to Fort Worth, population of a million. I can sell a lot more dinosaurs. A lot more people wanting to buy dinosaurs. Because remember, we're not looking at just how I want to buy dinosaurs. We are looking at how a whole economy would want to buy dinosaurs. Awesome, things. Lastly, expectations. What I expect will happen in the future. Right? If I see a sales or circular that says, plastic dinosaurs going on sale next week. When am I buying a dinosaur? Next week. They're cheaper then. Remember, law of demand, I buy when things are cheaper. I'm not going to buy them today. I'm going to buy them next week. So my current demand will go down. If the price of dinosaurs is expected to go up in the future, I'm going to buy all the dinosaurs I can now because I'm not going to want to buy them then. Again, law of demand. That price goes up in the future. Don't want to buy it then. I'm going to buy them all now. And then I'm going to store them. All right, so that's demand. All right? Demand. All right? Put it on a curve. You have a demand curve. All right? We'll add this together with supply later.